Hey, I'm Eric. I'm a professional wedding photographer and a dadtographer. And here are four reasons why your family photos may be meh. And stay to the end for a little dadtography tip. Reason number one, you're not shooting enough. The majority of the photos that I keep are actually just a result of luck. And by that, I don't mean just like any blind random luck. You need to position yourself in the right place at the right time. And on the chance that you do get lucky with a great shot, you're ready for it. We know our kids best in their behaviors. So you have the patience and the anticipation and taking a lot of frames, then you get a very high chance of getting a great image out of it. The other part of not shooting enough is that you may not be shooting enough of the mundane. Many of us wait for the right event, like a birthday or your children's first school performance before we even take out our cameras. And as a result, we miss out on the smaller details of the day-to-day -day events. Things like your kids brushing their teeth for the first time or one of them going crazy because they just had five pieces of chocolate. I think that these things are more meaningful to look back on years later. Yeah, it's great to capture the major events of their lives. But don't forget to capture moments like big brother collecting as many outdoor bubbles as he can and then washing his little brother's hair. Reason number two why your photos may suck. You're not getting in close enough. When you get into the mentality of getting close enough, you're kind of forced to use a wider angle lens. And wider angle lens usually give a sense that the viewer is actually there in the moment. And when you get close enough, it helps you fill the frame. When we shoot from too far away, we inadvertently fill the frame with things that may be distracting or don't really add to the story. So the next time you move in closer, take a look at each corner of your composition and ask yourself, do these elements add to the story of making your image? If not, move in closer. Also, the more you practice trying to fill the frame, you'll start learning how to move in different position and angles so that you do get those elements that make sense. I often use subjects of relevance like people or objects as a foreground to help fill the frame. Reason number three why your photos might suck. You're not getting low enough. Kids are short, so get down to their eye level or even lower so that you're not just getting angles of the top of their heads. I get it, it's so much easier to walk around, stay standing, and take a picture. The problem is that when they get a little bit closer to you, you're basically shooting down at the top of their heads and you lose all the contact because you're capturing mostly the ground. By getting low, you're not only meeting your kids at their eye level, but also seeing how they see the world. Yes, I'll admit, I am getting old and parts of my body are starting to hurt when they didn't used to before. So oftentimes when my kids are playing at home, I will pull up a chair and then get low from that position and then not move anywhere. In contrast to that, instead of shooting standing up, maybe even go even higher and you may be able to get unique perspectives like this. And reason number four why your photos may be meh, you're not shooting at higher apertures. Many of us started photography really loving to shoot wide open to get that creamy bokeh and soft backgrounds. Admit this with me, when we first got our Nifty 50, we've all taken that image wide open of a random inanimate object, posted it on social media, and felt like we were pros. As a result, we learned that good photos always needed a good bokeh. However, as I matured as a photographer, I learned that this is not always true. I caught myself using really wide apertures like f1.4 as an excuse or a gimmick to not think about my composition, foreground, background, and other elements that make a great image. Don't get me wrong, shooting wide open does have its purposes and I still do it in wedding photography. But not everything should be shot wide open. Nowadays I default my aperture to f4 and then f8 when I'm outdoors. And I find that when I use a wide angle lens like a 28mm and get close, even at f8, I'm still getting a bit of blur on the foreground and background to create dimension, while being clear enough to actually make out what it is to help create the story. And in doing this, again, you'll naturally learn to look at each corner of your framing and composition and make sure the elements make sense to the story. And here's a datography tip for the day. Try not to beat yourself up too much if you missed a moment or you didn't have your camera with you. I know the feeling when there's a great moment going on, the lighting looks great, and you don't have your camera with you or you weren't ready to take the photo. And as photographers, yeah, it sucks. But don't forget to just enjoy the moment as well. There's no point in taking these photos if you don't have your own experience and feelings and emotions to attach them to. All right, thanks for watching guys.